And for those that are watching, I'm Elise Finney. I'm the Director of Business Growth for Argent Bridge Advisors. And I'm joined today by Aaron Kidd with a firm called Thompson Greenspun, which is a CPA firm in Fairfax, Virginia. And Erin is the Tax Individual Program Manager, and she's an enrolled agent and an accredited financial counselor. And Erin is also one of our regular speakers on our webinar called Done With Divorce. And so when we're talking about um, filing married or filing jointly, mm -hmm. who's responsible for the tax liabilities? Both of you. And what exactly. about sep like in terms of separate filings as well? So if you file married filing separately or you each file your own return, then you are each individually um, responsible for the tax on your own return. There is some um, thing, there are some things to think about if you live in a community property state. So if you live in a community property state, the state taxes are different. Like you split the income down the middle, typically, no matter who earns it. So there's some coordination that needs to happen there. Um, but if you are in, let's say Virginia, it's not a community property state, you're, you report your income, your spouse reports their income, you have your deductions, they have their deductions, um, and it goes that way. And the people who take the deductions are the people who actually make the payment. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's something to, to consider. And here's the other thing that often gets overlooked. If you file married filing separately, and let's say your spouse is the one who is paying the mortgage, they're paying a mortgage um, and, and you happen to not for whatever reason. Um, but if you file married filing separately and your spouse itemizes, you must itemize. Yeah. Whether you've only got $50 to deduct. Yeah. So that can be- and then, you, and then you can't take the full deduction that you would have otherwise been able to take. Right, you can't, you won't get the full deduction. You may not, you know, maybe you don't have anything. Maybe you just have a, a you know, some charitable contributions or, or something like that. If you're not both making those expenses, paying those expenses that are deductible. So the standard deduction, of course, now in the last couple of years is much, much higher than it used to be. Yeah. Um, so again, if it's amicable or if you can have that kind of agreement when you're having the conversation, um, when you're speaking with your attorney, you're speaking with your CPA, um, you know, maybe it's going to be better for, it, you know, if you can go ahead and agree to file with the standard deduction. The benefit of having the higher standard deduction in the new tax law is like you're generally what would put a lot of people over top is state income tax, you know, mm -hmm. because like here in Virginia, DC metro area, we pay a lot in state income tax, and real estate taxes, but we're limited finally jointly to $10,000. Single is also $10,000, but married filing separate it's 5,000 each. So it still may be more beneficial to file with the standard deduction, even if you're paying, you know, the mortgage on the property or, or real estate taxes or something. And like in that. a situation where it's a separation, is that also kind of like a who files first situation? Well, so the IRS ideally should be matching up these returns because you put your, you know, you say I'm filing married filing separate and this is my spouse's social security number. So if they itemize, you should be itemizing. And yeah, it, it, hopefully there's a conversation with, look, look, I itemized, sorry about your luck. Um, you know, the first one's yeah. gone first. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, who gets to the finish line? I do, you know, we, we don't like seeing those situations. We hope that, you know, there's communication or it's outlined in a decree. Absolutely. Um, if it's in your separation agreement, then you've got a better leg to stand on too, mm -hmm. right? Like you can say, you know, look, this is the agreement. And then there's there are avenues for reporting, but the IRS and, and divorce court don't talk to one another. So yeah, the IRS has its rules, and it's a it's an agreement, right, that you're going to follow. Mm -hmm. the agreement. Yeah. 